here is our uh, low speed following distance alert strategy. So with the low speed following distance strategy, you're going to get a close, you're going to get a closer into an impact alert uh, for your strategy. So Jerry, what makes it low speed? Uh, below 37 miles an hour. just likes to just get into the impact alert so he'll do that all day long <laughs> so our next maneuver we're going to show is the rapid approach so the forward vehicle is going to be moving at around 10 to 15 mile an hour Fred's going to get up into the 40 45 mile an hour range and the system's going to take over as we get closer and it it'll reduce uh, with the next gen up to 50 mile an hour, with the current generation up to 35 mile an hour of speed difference. system, uh, you have, uh, electronic stability control has to be installed in order for... Yes, you have, to, you have to have our ESP to have the fusion system. Yeah, you can't have the fusion without, without stability. Right. So, right. And because stability is now standard, um, because of the government mandate FMBSS 136, you're going to get stability in the tractor anyways. Yeah, okay. So we're going to show the blind spotter here. With the blind spotter, next generation we have a cam connection so you get 20 feet back 20 feet in front so as he goes by it'll go from yellow to red and as Fred turned on his turn signal we got a, a an alert uh, letting you know that there was something there and if there's something there and you're not going to turn you felt the one second throttle interrupt uh, for the speed for the speed sign record so let's take a just a couple seconds because we had a couple things happen, happen there all. pretty quickly. So as Jerry mentioned, we've got a radar mounted down on the side. That's our blind spotter. Um, it's our next generation blind spotter. So it delivers a further forward to help capture those small vehicles that might be hiding up in the front that are below even that forward mirror the driver might not see, as well as a little bit farther back down the trailer. It's can connected, but it is not part of the fusion system. Okay. Um, sometime in the future, it will become part of the fusion system, but for now, it's a standard. Part of the fusion system, though, was the speed sign recognition. I'll touch on that in just a second. So the speed 
sign recognition, the camera can read the speed limit sign. And as Jared mentioned, above five miles an hour, we give the driver an alert. Above 10 miles an hour over the posted speed limit, we give the driver an alert and a one second D throttle. You probably felt that uh, on the way uh, around. Okay, so let's just grab a lane department. And that's all sonar activated, right? The lane departure? Yeah. No, it's not. Not the, not the lane departure, but the. Uh, the uh, sta stationary. stationary. Stationary is using both the radar and the camera. Okay. So it's using the, the radar to make sure that it, the metallic object is out there. And then the camera is going, yes, that is, that is a car. Let's go ahead and brake on it so you get less false interventions out there. Break. Uh, he's going to get around 55 mile an hour, and we're going to come to a, do a complete rapid stop. Oh, let's go a little faster. A little faster? Uh, yeah, he's holding on. 60 miles an hour. Ready? So you get to feel the power of the brakes and the performance. So we've been doing a lot of hard stops. Stop like it did first thing this morning. Disc brakes, your performance is more reliable than your, your drum brakes. And what is that, that, that estimated stopping distance? So, um, at the, 55. So, the, the uh, FNBSS 121 requirement is that a, uh, at 60 miles an hour with an FNBSS 121 trailer, um, we need to stop within 250 foot with the air disc brake and a, uh, the FMBSS 121 trailer, we get at to about 200, 210 foot. Okay. With drum brake, um, we'll get about, uh, new reduced stopping distance, about 225. But keep in mind, as the brake's heating up, a drum, when the drum heats up and expands away from the friction, that's what causes us to have brake fade. With a disc brake, the rotor is surrounded by the friction, so when it heats up, it expands towards the uh, friction material, and that's why we have virtually no fade. Okay. So we actually get, uh, in our testing, the more the brakes heat up, the better um, the air disc brakes perform versus drum, meaning drum keeps extending out the stopping where air disc brake stays pretty consistent. Okay, any other questions we can